Okay guys, I'm going to be honest here. I'm bored of seeing these videos on the internet surrounding the pros and cons of creating supplementation without any solid scientific studies backing each point. So, I've done a definitive research surrounding creatine so you guys don't have to. If you stick with me throughout this video, I'll be answering all the big questions, such as the specific benefits of creatine supplementation and some of the concerns, like is it linked to increased rates of cancer and kidney dysfunctions. Before we get into it, I just want to say, if you enjoy this video, a thumbs up would be amazing. So guys, creatine is a molecule that the body can naturally produce. It's made primarily in the kidneys and completed in the liver by three amino acids, glycine, arginine and methionine. The amino acids are ultimately converted into creatine phosphate, which is then stored in skeletal muscles and used for energy. However, the body produces creatine in small amounts and excretes creatine on a daily basis. This is why some people choose to source extra creatine externally. It's also naturally found in our diet within foods like meat and fish. This is the same kind of creatine that's produced in the body. Again, levels of creatine can still remain low, which is why it can be supplemented. Creatine can be supplemented in the monohydrate form, creatine monohydrate. Simply put, it's a creatine molecule with a water molecule attached to it. So, how does creatine monohydrate work? What happens within the body once supplemented? To appreciate this, we must first understand that the most basic unit of cellular energy in the body is adenosine triphosphate, also known as ATP. Cells can break down ATP to smaller units, such as adenosine diphosphate, ADP, in a chemical reaction which releases an inorganic phosphate group in free energy. This reaction is reversible, so the cell can recycle ADP to reform ATP, which can be used in later reactions to utilize the chemical energy stored in bonds, forming the ATP molecule. Generally, the more ATP the cells can store, and the faster the ATP can be regenerated upon use, the more work our cells can do. This concept applies to all cells, including our muscle cells. So, creatine phosphate is essential in accelerating the process of ATP regeneration, and it does this by donating its phosphate group, therefore supplementing with creatine increases the work our muscle cells can do. The issue that arises within the system of energy regeneration is that the body's natural creatine stores are limited and once it is depleted, the body has to revert to using fatty acids or glucose to continue the ATP regeneration. But supplementing with creatine allows the body's total creatine stores to rise, which can increase by 20% in the muscles alone upon supplementation. Arguably the most significant benefit of creatine monohydrate supplementation is its positive effects on muscle growth. Creatine monohydrate benefits muscle growth in several ways. Firstly, this supplement allows us to lift heavier weights for more reps. This therefore increases the stimulus for muscle growth. And secondly, creatine increases skeletal muscle hypertrophy, which is defined as the enlargement of an organ or tissue from the increase in the size of its cells. Evidence for the first point comes from a 2003 study which showed individuals ingesting creatine combined with resistance training obtain on average 8% and 14% more performance on maximum, i.e. one rep max, or endurance strength, i.e. maximum repetitions at a given percent of one rep max, than the placebo groups. Leading on to the second point, Krip et al. observed greater improvements on one rep max, lean body mass, and fiber cross-sectional area, i.e. size of the individual muscle cells, in trained young males when resistance training was combined with a multi-nutrient supplement containing creatine, protein and carbohydrate compared with protein alone or a protein carbohydrate supplement without the creatine. What's fascinating is how this muscular hypertrophy is explained from a biochemical stance. One particular study reported a 250, 45 and 70% increase for collagen mRNA, glucose transporter 4 and myosin heavy chain type 2A after 5 days of creatine loading protocol. The authors speculated that creatine, in addition to a single bout of resistance training, can favour an anabolic environment by inducing changes in gene expression after only 5 days of supplementation. After all, the mentioned mRNA molecules above would ultimately be translated into the corresponding proteins and these are major components for muscle cell development. Creatine monohydrate supplementation also poses positive effects on muscle recovery, but to put it bluntly here, there hasn't been many studies surrounding this. However, 
One study did show that creatine supplementation reduced inflammatory and muscle soreness markers, creating kinase, lactate dehydrogenase, and tumor necrosis factor alpha after the participants ran 30 kilometers. Runners were supplemented for five days prior to the 30 kilometer race with four doses of five grams of creatine and 15 grams of maltodextrin control per day, while the control group received the same amount of maltodextrin. Pre-race blood samples were collected immediately before running the 30 km race and 24 hours after the end of the race. After the test, athletes from the control group presented an increase in plasma creatine kinase by 4.4 fold, LDH by 43% and tumor necrosis factor alpha by 2.34 fold concentrations. These markers are indicative of a high level of cell injury and inflammation. However, Creatine supplementation attenuated the changes observed for creatine kinase by 19% and tumor necrosis factor alpha by 33.7% and completely abolished the increase in LDH plasma concentration observed after running 30 kilometers. Finally, we will move on to some of the common safety concerns surrounding creatine supplementation. The biggest concern I find regarding creatine is the scare surrounding damage to the kidneys. There have been a few reported renal health issues associated with creatine supplementation. For example, a case of a healthy 24-year-old man who presented with acute renal failure and proteinuria while taking creatine and multiple other supplements for bodybuilding purposes. But these are isolated reports in which recommended dosages are not followed and the health issues may have risen due to the other supplements taken. Or there is a history of previous health complaints such as renal disease. So in essence, if you do have an underlying health issues, consult your doctor before creating supplementation. Alarmingly, concerns had been raised amongst consumers and national agencies with the potential of creatine monohydrate to act as precursors for heterocyclic amines, which are of a mutagenic and carcinogenic nature. However, the study detailed in Source 8 aimed to investigate the acute and chronic effects of low and high dose creatine supplementation on the production of heterocyclic amines in healthy humans. And out of the 576 assessments performed, only 9, which included 3 from the creatine group and 6 from the placebo group, showed quantifiable levels of HCAs. And individual analyses revealed that diet rather than creatine supplementation was a main responsible factor for HCA formation in these cases. So, overall, it can be concluded that creatine supplementation is safe for healthy athletes and will positively benefit performances and workout results, whether that's for long distance runners or weightlifters. But be sure to stick with the recommended dosing, which, as Source 7 states, creatine supplementation appears safe when used by healthy adults at the recommended loading dose of 20 grams per day for five days, followed by maintenance doses of three grams per day. So guys, if you enjoyed this video, feel free to leave a thumbs up and if you have suggestions for future videos, I'd love to hear them.